start our project, you're going to need two sheets of paper that are 10 by 12. And I'm just going to show you with one sheet of 10 by 12 paper, because I already started with the, the paper, the blue paper, um, to make my project. So I'm going to go ahead and show you with yellow just to make it a little bit easier to see. So two pieces that are 10 by 12. Let me write that down. That might help you. Two at 10 by 12. Now. Um, after you have the two pieces at 10 by 12, you're going to do some scoring and you're going to do these score marks on all four sides. So the score marks that you're going to make are going to be at 3 eighths of an inch, 3 fourths of an inch, and 1 and 1 eighth of an inch. And you're going to do that on all four sides. So I will do that on one piece here and then you will do that on both of your pieces. So the 3 eighths is between the 1 fourth and the 1 half. Then we have three fourths, and then one and one eighth is between the one and the one and a fourth. We're going to turn our paper and do that again. Three eighths, three fourths, one and one eighth. And the last one, I need to get one of those score tools that has that round ball at the end. I see a lot of people use those. I think that would be easier on this scoreboard than this one. I always say that and then I forget to pick one up. I don't even know. I've seen some people get them from the cake decorating section or something, but I need to look into that. Okay, so this is what your paper will look like. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to do some cutting. Now there's just two cuts you need to make. On the first 10 by 12 sheet, let me get a cutter here you're going to want the 10 inch side at the top, okay? And you're going to move it to six and a half and cut. Okay, so you have two pieces. So with the 10 inch going across, you are going to um, cut the first one at six and a half. So that gives you a six and a half inch piece and a three and a half inch piece. Okay. Now on the next one, still with the 10 inch side going across, you're going to cut at four and a half. And then that will give you the next piece. The other piece will be five and a half. So they go in stair steps. You'll have a three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, and six and a half piece of paper. Okay. So once you have that done, It's going to, you're going to have the different pieces and then you're going to want to cut out the squares in the corner. So where the overlap is from the scoring, you're going to cut out that corner, that square. So it looks like that. And you do it on both sides and on all four pieces. Okay, so that's what it looks like once you've cut it out. So you need to do that to all four. And before we burnish uh, our score lines, if you want a decorative um, top, then you're going to want to punch the top before you do any of your folding. So I am going to use this punch, which is very large as far as the um, decoration goes, but I'm running short on paper. so decorative paper so it's okay that I'm taking away some of that space because I'll have decorative paper down here. Okay, so um, you're going to want to find the center and start your punching there and go all the way across. So I'm going to finish punching and then we'll start burnishing our score lines and show you how to attach those to make the accordion fold. The next thing you need to do after you've done your punching, if you chose to punch, is to um, score or to burnish your score lines. And so there's a certain way you want to score these or burnish these so that it lays correctly for the accordion fold. So I'm going to turn, I this is the side that I made the score lines. I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to take this very first score line and fold it away from me. And I will burnish that. Then the next score line you're going to do towards yourself. And 
and then the last score line is going to go away from you. And we're going to burnish. Okay, so that's going to make your accordion. Can you see any of that? No. The blue paper is hard to see. Okay, and you're going to do the same thing with the side. So keeping it upside down, you take the first score line or the one that's farthest away from you and you fold it in or away from yourself. And then you're going to bring the next score line towards you and then the last line, uh, score line away from you. And you're going to want to burnish that to help it lay flat. And the other side, we're going to do the same thing. Coming towards me and away. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is we want this to lay nice and flat inside of our book and we also want to make sure that it looks good from the side so that we don't see both the decorative paper edge and um, the blue paper. So to do that we're going to fold this or glue this closed a little bit differently. So I'm going to use my art glitter glue and I'm going to take the bottom and fold it down except for that last flap. Let me zoom in a little bit you can see what I'm doing. I'll do it a couple of times so you can see. So I'm laying this down flat except for this last piece. I'm going to take the side and take that the first mountain and fold it in so that last flap is out. Then I'm going to fold up that last bottom piece and fold over the side piece. And that's going to help it lay nice and flat and get rid of some bulk. And then I'm just going to put a little glue right here and pinch it closed like so. Okay, and I'll just hold it for a second and then I'll show you how to the other side just in case you missed it the first side. Okay, so I have the first two down with the last flap open. I'm going to fold over the side leaving that last flap open. Now I bring up the bottom and bring over the side so it catches it inside. And I'm going to put a little glue in the corner and pinch it closed. Okay, give me a second to let that dry before I move on and I'll show you one more time on another piece. Okay, so you can see it gets rid of some of that bulk. Now let's do one more together. This is the side that I did my scoring, so I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to take the score line that I did uh, that's farthest away from me and fold it away from myself. So in and burnish and then towards me on the next one and then away from me on the last one. And then I'm going to make sure I burnish it to help it lay flat. Okay, side pieces away from me, towards me, away from me. Burnish to make it flat. I'm going to use my finger on the punched area. Last one, away from me, towards me, and away from me. My phone keeps dinging. Burnish. Okay, so with the bottom piece, I'm going to take that first mountain and fold it down so that I have that last flap open. I take the side piece, this first mountain piece, and fold it over. Then I bring up that bottom and bring the side piece over. And I'm going to place some glue in that corner to keep it closed. I'm going to pinch it until it has time to dry. 
A lot of people use clothespins. That would probably be handy right about now. I don't really have clothespins. I do have um, some of those uh, different other clips, but it kind of leaves an indentation on my paper, so I don't use them. I should invest in paper clips. This is what I have, and I don't like it because it leaves marks on the paper. But I wouldn't think clothespins would do that. Okay, last one I'll show you. Fold in that mountain piece, leaving the last flap open. The bottom, um, oh, I did it wrong. The bottom goes down first, then the side, then fold up the bottom and fold over the side. And we're gonna put a dab of glue. And pinch it shut. All right, so I'm gonna go do that to the other two that I haven't done yet. And then we're gonna cut our decorative paper to fit on this section of our pockets. And we'll just keep moving along. The second envelope that I'm gonna do, or the pocket, I guess I should say, on the uh, opposite side of the tiered pockets um, is going to be, you're gonna need a piece of paper that is seven and one eighth by 12. And then this time you're only gonna score on three sides. So you're going to put your paper in on the seven, uh, excuse me, on the 12 inch side and then score at three eighths, three fourths, one and one eighth. Rotate it so that the seven and a fourth or the seven and an eighth side is at the top. Do the same scoring, three eighths, three fourths, one and one eighth. And then you're going to do one more side. So the 12 inch side is back at the top and three eighths, three fourths, one and one eighth. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and cut those corners out again, just like we did with the other ones. So where the overlapping score marks are, there's a square, that's what we're taking out. And again, before I do any scoring, um, I'm going to go ahead and punch my decorative top and I'm going to keep the same decorative punch that I um, started with on the other ones. I wouldn't suggest using this one. I wouldn't use this one next time just because I think it's almost too big of a decoration or a decorative top. I would have liked something a little bit smaller. So uh, I would do it smaller next time. Live and learn. So I'm going to line this up in the center and I'm going to punch out my top border Oops. line it up keep moving it down okay got that side and let me finish the other one There we go. Punch. Oh, that one moved. All right. Get rid of the scraps. Okay, so then we're back to doing what we did before uh, on this larger pocket. And I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm gonna burnish my score marks. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna look at that first score mark and bring it up. Then I'm gonna bring the second one towards me. And then I'm gonna bring the last one up. And I'm going to give it a good burnish. Same thing on the sides. 
go away from yourself, then towards yourself, and then away. And let's burnish that. Last side. And I folded that wrong. I did a little too fast and I didn't do it on the score mark. Okay, get my art glitter glue. Bring up the bottom mountain then the side mountain, then bring up that last bottom piece. I'm going to put some adhesive. Then I'm going to bring over that side piece and glue it down. Give it a second to hold. So this would be good for like storing tags and um, things or um, extra cut aparts things like that, or if you've made some cards and you want to store some, depending on what size they are, that would work. Bring that up. And bring this over. Hold it for a second. Make sure that we've got a good grip. Go ahead and score this again, or burnish it, sorry. Okay, so that's going to be our larger pocket on the opposite side. Um, I need to decide what kind of decorative paper I want to put on. Uh, depending on how large your punch was at the top will determine how much of your decorative paper you're going to need. So I took my smallest one and I cut my 12 by 12 paper to 9 and 5 eighths by 12 and then I just started trimming to see what I needed. So cut your paper at 9 and 5 eighths by 12 and then this one I needed just short of one inch so I did like um, like pretty much 15 sixteenths and I took my um, walnut stain and went around all four edges on this one and then I will adhere that to the bottom. The next one I did, now it's going to be covered by this. So I only did my walnut stain on three sides. This was just a hair short of two inches. So like one and 15 sixteenths. And I'm going to adhere that like so. There's a terrible shadow. The next one needed a hair short of three inches by nine and five eighths. Again, I did my, um, I used the walnut stain on three sides, didn't need it at the bottom. And the last piece was a hair short of four inches. So I had to cut mine at like three and 15 sixteenths by nine and five eighths. So I'm going to, that I use like a purple, um, uh, wood grain on that one. So on the opposite side I wanted a little bit more of a pattern. So when I do this one I'm going to need 9 and 5 eighths width again but this time I'm going to need it to be about like I said yours might be different than mine. Uh, looks like 4 and 5 eighths. Let me see if that's right. Four. Yep, I'm going to say four and five eighths. So let me cut that at four and five eighths. Let's see if that works. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and this one I will have to do the ink on all four sides because nothing will be covering it. So I'm taking my walnut stain okay. 
And now I'm just going to go back and adhere all of the papers to the pockets. And then we're going to attach them to the uh, base or the cover of the folio. I don't know if I call it a folio. I guess uh, pocket mini album. So we'll put glue the paper on and then we'll adhere them to the base. For the cover of our album, you're going to need to cut some chipboard. Um, I have this one at 2 inches by 10 inches, and that's the spine. Um, you can go 1 and 3 fourths by 10. It's totally up to you. I like to have mine just a little bit bigger so it uh, can sit up or stand up a little bit better. And then you're going to need two pieces that are 7 by 10. Okay. Um, to prepare your chipboard, uh, let me back up. Let's go ahead and prepare our paper also. Um, you are going to need to take two 12 by 12 sheets and combine them for the cover. So I'm going to take my, what do I have here? I have one fourth inch score tape and I'm going to place that on the end of this sheet. make sure that's on real good and I'm also going to put one just for durability and to make sure it's strong I'm going to put one on the other sheet also at the very edge I do that just to be safe make sure that they're on real good um, and then I'm going to overlap them So I'm just going to put one with the score tape facing up, one with the score tape facing down, and I'm going to overlap them like that, okay? That one. Take off the score tape of the other one. Okay, and I'm just going to line those up as close as I can. press down okay and I'm going to move that to the side I am going to save myself some time I purchased the uh, some score tape sheets so these measure six by six so just to save, I'm not. I don't think I have to put score tape on every piece of the um, chipboard to make it be durable and strong and stick to the paper. So I'm going to put one of these six by sixes in the middle, and then I'm going to work with my three eighths. Or is that a half? Let's see. I have. I think these are both three eighths actually. Uh, I'll use my three eighths to go around and make up some of the difference. So I'm going to adhere that in the center and what I do is I just start peeling it back and then I place it where I want it and then I pull and rub the score tape down so it's flat. Okay, And then I'll go back in with the three eighths and just go around the perimeter it's a time saver that's for sure by using those sheets and I know they come in different sizes I just happen to have the six by six so I'll just go ahead and put in one here and one here okay and that should be plenty of score tape to stick to the cover of the paper and be durable I'm going to do that with the second one also place the six by six in the center and I start to peel it and just kind of eyeball where I want it and then press down so there's no wrinkles and fill in with the 3 8 if you have thicker or wider score tape that makes it go faster so if you have the half inch or the one inch 
that's nice to work with too for your covers. The covers can be time consuming, but you do want to make sure you use enough so that your book doesn't fall apart either because you go to all that time and effort and money and you don't want to have it fall apart. All right, so there's my front and back covers and all a good tip here is you do need to take your bone folder and burnish it real good so that when you take the backing off of the tape it does stay on and doesn't lift. I don't think I did it to this one. Okay, the last piece we need to do is the spine and I will just use the 3 8 on this one. I'll go around the perimeter first. Now remember my spine is two inches, yours might be one and three fourths, it's what you prefer. So I am in Nebraska and tomorrow is the big eclipse and so we have been raring up to go and see it. Um, I teach school and we've been we got glasses for all of our students in the middle school and we've trained them on how to use them and make sure we've done some a lot of safety lessons so that they don't look directly at the sun and how to wear their glasses. So it's a big deal. A lot of people are coming to watch. I think Beatrice and Ravenna, Nebraska are where it's supposed to be the best where you get 100% full coverage. In Omaha it's only going to be like a 98% coverage and now it's supposed to be cloudy and possibly rainy. It's still a learning experience and they'll still be able to see a difference, but I really hope it's not raining after all this time and effort we've put into the training. Okay, so let's get back on track here. Now for this, um, you're going to lay your chipboard down and you want, this is 10 inches and our paper is 12. So we don't have to trim anything on the top or the bottom because you want a one inch border. And so I'm going to place this about one inch from the edge. Now you can eyeball it or you can actually get out your ruler. So um, you're going to then have, I'm going to put a one fourth inch piece of score tape in the middle here. I'll have a piece of one fourth inch score tape there and then here. And so I can tell I'm going I'm to have excess that I need to trim. So I'm going to take my uh, X-Acto knife and trim so that I have a one inch border over here. And I'm going to adhere my chipboard down to my paper and then fold up my corners. And I will do that and come back and we'll get started on it, putting everything together. I prepared my chipboard cover. So I adhered my chipboard down and I put the one fourth inch score tape in between. I then took my score tape and ran it around the perimeter of the chipboard and I also ran it around the perimeter of the blue paper. And then I mitered the corners and when you miter your corners don't go all the way to the corner. Give yourself a little bit of leeway here so it'll cover and you don't have that brown showing. So don't cut right to the corner. Give yourself a little space. I then started to train my paper by bending it so it will fold easier. So I just kind of pushed down where the chipboard was. And now we're going to take off the score tape and place the paper down and give it a real good burnishing. So I'm going to start taking off my score tape. And this is the time where you take the score tape out from the center also. You don't want to forget that, which I'm not going to lie, I've done it before and forgot. So all four here, and if this is tricky, then I'm going to have to get a tool to help me get that out, which I just use this pink tool that I have, and it's got a sharp end just to kind of get this going for me. There we go. Started to rip a little bit and I want to get as much of it off the backing as I can. Okay, 
there's one. And let's get the other one off there. Okay. Take this off. And I do my long sides first. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it up straight. Pushing down. Now one thing I normally do that I did not do with this, and I'll do it on the next one to show you, is putting a line of the uh, litter glue up along the edge here of my chipboard. And I just think it gives it a nicer finished look on the edge. So I'm going to do that with this side. I don't know why I forgot the other one. So just place a little line, a thin line of art glitter glue. And it, I've heard it just kind of breaks up the, oh, the linen a little bit. I don't know, uh, just to make it a nicer fold or crease. So I'm going to do the same thing. Fold up. Get my bone folder and burnish so that it sticks real good. I'm also going to go along the edge, just kind of make sure that that glue is sticking. Get it inside here. Be careful when you're burnishing that so you don't do it too much and rip your paper. Now on the ends, we have to make sure that we cover this corner. And so remember when I cut or mitered, I had a little extra. So I'm just gonna use my finger and push that in a little bit so that the corner is covered. Out of camera here just a second okay and run that bead this is not a necessary step it's just an extra step for that finished look and burnish that on the sides also and one last side and make sure that this goes in Because I, I love the country, uh, the cottage life paper, but I am a little short just because I've made several projects. I made a tag and I made a, another, a mini album. So I don't have a ton of extra paper. So I am going to cover the inside in this blue also. Okay. So I am going to place blue paper here. And so the height, now remember our book is going to be standing like so. Okay. So um, as I measure this, we want our paper to be 
about nine and oh let's see seven eighths maybe a hair shorter than nine and seven eighths nine and three fourths might be not enough I'm just gonna make it nine and uh, seven eighths and obviously this is only 12 inches long so we're gonna need another piece to make up for that X that side here so cut your paper to nine and seven eighths and then you're gonna um, keep it at the 12 inch and then you're gonna need another piece of nine and seven eighths to take care of that missing piece right here okay so I'll do that um, and I will be back to show you what that looks like this is the inside of my um, cover after I put the blue paper down on the inside. You're going to have a seam because it wasn't long enough. I went ahead and decided to place a piece of the decorative paper on the spine. So you're going to want to measure your spine and go about an eighth or a fourth of an inch smaller. And um, that's where I put it because when you have your folders in or your pockets, it's going to look nicer if you have that covered. So I went ahead and put that in. Um, the outside now we're going to put the outside paper on and remember our book is going to open from the top so we want it to be able to sit and stand up. I always like to do a bow closure but just because I think that you can control the width a little bit better like if the book is a little bit thicker you can tie it tighter and it'll stay closed tighter so but there are different types of closures that you could do you could put a paper and wrap it around and have a magnet closure if you wanted to um, I'm just going to use seam binding. I, you can use seam binding for anything. <laughs> so um, I want to leave enough that I can tie it. Um, I'm not going to wrap it all the way around my book. I'm just going to um, put it in the center and go down about halfway. Let's see. Yeah, about halfway and adhere it. And then I'll place my decorative paper on top. So you can measure if you want. I'm just going to eyeball it and I think I'm just going to lay a piece of seam binding or excuse me score tape down where I think the halfway mark is and that works for me and I'm going to go ahead and place the seam binding on top trim that off a little bit because I didn't put the tape all the way down there. Alright, and so on the other side, now you have something to eyeball where to put your score tape. Okay, and I'm just going to cut a piece better to have it too long than too short and I will take this off oops got a little thing there okay okay and I'm just gonna leave those flinging or just leave them loose. Uh, the next thing that you're going to want to do is I did the cutting of my decorative paper for the outside. You're going to need, um, this is what my front cover will look like. This measures nine and seven eighths by seven. So nine and seven eighths across by seven up and down. I went ahead and put the walnut stain around the outside edge. The back of mine is also nine and seven eighths by um, seven. And I went ahead and put the walnut stain around the edge. And even though you're not gonna see the bottom because it's gonna be standing up, I still wanna cover the spine. And so I measured mine and I ended up with two and an eighth 
um, I did two and an eighth by nine and seven eighths, and then that will go right here. Okay, so then after we adhere the paper to the outside cover, then we're going to put our accordion folders on the inside. We're ready to finish up the inside, and so I decided that once I put this pocket in, I don't want to see the blue, so I went ahead and I cut some of my extra paper that I had, uh, and I measured just to make sure it was the same uh, width and height, or not height, but the same width as the decorative paper on the pocket. You don't have to have it go all the way down because the pocket's going to cover it. So I'm going to center it and place that down. I put uh, score tape on the back. And if I can get it off there, I just thought it looked better with some color behind it. Sometimes the score tape is tricky. Okay. Um, and I did do the walnut stain around three sides. I didn't need to do this side because you're not going to be able to see that side. So I'm just going to line it up close to my edge, center it. And push down and adhere it. Now when you put your pocket in, because our book is standing up, you don't want to put your pocket this way, you want to put it this way so that when it stands up nothing falls out. Okay. So the next thing is to put score tape along the outside edge where you have that one about three eighths of an inch or one fourth of an inch ridge. So I used one fourth inch and I did not put the tape up where I have the decorative punch either. Okay and I'm going to remove the backing and I'm going to turn the book so it's easier for me to line it up and you kind of want to see where your book is bending so you don't go too low and you want to line it up so it's even Give it a good push and burnish so that it stays down. All right, so we have our one side pocket done. And the next side, I went ahead and did the same thing. I cut an extra strip and I'm just going to put it way at the to um, top and I'm going to center it and I did the walnut stain around the three edges so that it's got a cleaner look when you put the pockets on. Now this side is going to be a little bit trickier to put the pockets on evenly because it might not be for you, it depends how much how big your punch was at the top. Mine was so wide that I want you to be able to see the decorative paper behind it so I can't just lay one on top of the other. I have to manipulate them a little bit and I'll show you what I mean in a second. And okay, so that is going to be a cleaner look. Now, these pockets then are going to lay here so that we have nothing but storage in here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this one down first so that I can see just a little bit of my border. Now if you don't have this thick of a border you can just adhere one piece on top of another right on top of each other like that. But I don't like that you can't see it very much paper so I want it to go down a hair and so that's why I'm doing it this way. So I went ahead and put the 1 4 inch score tape around the edge and I'm hoping that I measured well enough that I can get it to fit just right. This one, like I said, is going to be a little trickier. All right, so I'm going to turn the book so I can work with it a little bit better. And I'm just going to place this as close to the top as I can and still see
Okay. And burnish it so it stays down. So now my next one, I'm going to go just a hair lower, just a tiny bit so that I can see some of that paper. So I'm going to take off the backing again. Okay. And I'm going to lift it up because I want it to be even. Give it a good burnish. Okay, so we have two. Now the next one. Looks good. Okay. Remove the backing to the score tape. it up a little bit so I can eyeball it and make sure it's even. Looks good there. I'll push down. Burnish. And you can see it's the accordion. You can see it from the side, I think. <laughs> and one last one. And this one, I want to make sure it doesn't go over. It's going to be perfect. Okay, remove the backing. And then we're going to eyeball it. And so it does not go past that spine because you want the book to be able to close. Okay, I'm going to lift it up a hair so I can see. And looks good about there. And burnish. All right, so that's what your accordion pockets look like. We have the larger one on this side. So now it's just a matter of going back and adding a few embellishments here and there, being able to stick tags down inside, store cut aparts, whatever it is you need to store in here. So I will come back after I've decorated it and show you the final product. Here's the finished product after I decorated the front. I couldn't put too much on it because when you open it, it lays flat and I didn't want this to get all messed up. So I had a wooden frame and I took some of the paper and put that behind there. These are um, Market 49. No, that, is that what it's called? Hold on. It's these. Um, 49 and Market, excuse me, um, used some of those flowers, and I had a wooden piece that said Joy. That's from the 3D embellishment collection. Uh, and so, when you open it, it holds things for you, like it could be letters, it could be stationery, it could be important uh, letters or receipts. Then over here I just made a couple things to show you what it could hold. Some tags. So that's what that site looks like. And it's got quite a bit of space and thickness. And when you see it sideways, you can see that, I mean, I guess you can't see because the lighting is terrible. I guess you can't see, sorry. And then you just tie it at the top. and it stands up. There you go. If you need a, a pocket accordion album, here's your, here's your fix right here. All right, most of the supplies I used I got from Country Craft Creations. The paper line is called Cottage Life by 49 and Market. Um, give it a try and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.